Hello and welcome to 2023, a brand new year and we're continuing on with my monthly astrological forecast giving you an idea of what energy shift to expect as well as which crystals and which essential oils I suggest you align with to help you kind of navigate through and take advantage of each of these times. Now, overall, when we look at January 2023, you'll find that there's actually no major retrogrades kind of going in or out, apart from Mercury retrograde going direct on the 18th of January. There are some minor ones, which I'm going to talk about in this video, but we also probably want to pay a lot of attention to the lunar cycle in this month as well. And that actually marks our very first, um, I guess, event that is happening in January. That is happening on the 6th, and we have our full moon in Cancer. Now, what does Cancer rule? Our private life, our home life, our family life, everything that kind of happens on that intimate level. So the opposite to that is Capricorn, which is your public life. You're seeing me in my, pup, in my Capricorn realm right now, but you don't know what's happening in my home life, and that's the Cancerian life. So we wanna make sure that we're getting along with our family, with those we share a home with, and probably after the holiday season, you might have some intentions of how you'd like to improve that because it's kind of a bit of a pressure cooker through that December. So this is the time to sit under the full moon and think about how do we find more comfort in this space. This may be by settling and soothing relationships, mending relationships, communicating in a new way, but it can also be about making your home more comfortable. There is so many challenges on us in the world and getting out there and that we have to kind of, you know, put ourselves out there and be in areas of discomfort and so on, that we really need to come back to a sanctuary. And our home really should be a sanctuary and the full moon in Cancer is the time to make that resolution. Now, you, I love working with white and clear crystals around the full moon and there are many different ones. But when we come to Cancer, I love good old moonstone. Now, of course, moonstone is the epitome of the full moon, especially in that white or that rainbow form where it's got that beautiful rainbow sheen in it. Why this is really great, Cancer is ruled by the moon, so there's a kind of a double connection of lunar energy here. You also have Cancerians are very intuitive, and this is a great intuition stone as well. So it's about knowing what to do in your relationships, and this can be a really great guidance. The essential oil that I've chosen to work with that is Roman chamomile for this lunar cycle. Roman chamomile, the message of Roman chamomile is simply gentleness. And often when we have friction at home, we, we push, we argue. How can we be more gentle? Sometimes the gentle nudge is more powerful than a shove, Roman chamomile teaches us. The other thing is Roman chamomile is very much about abundance and it brings that um, kind of joy into the home as well as creating peace around the home. So this will help to bring peace in both your sanctuary and in your intimate relationships as well. Now happening on that day as well, a small asteroid by the name of Isis is also going into retrograde. So on the 6th, you may or may not make, uh, notice this kind of shift, but it's just good to be aware of that and maybe have some of these crystals and essential oils with you. So what you'll find is um, Isis the asteroid, named obviously after the Egyptian goddess, is to do with our ability to bring be in the constant flow of abundance and good things happening. She also helps us to work to, in harmony and unison with those around us. And so when she goes into retrograde, you may find that you start to come against these obstacles and things aren't flowing too well. So this is a great chance to look at, okay, where can I improve this? And how can I also not rely purely on other people, but how can I actually rely on my own ability to manifest the life that I want? The crystals that I really like when working with Isis the first one is carnelian, and the redder it is, the better, because red carnelian is often referred to as blood of Isis. So carnelian obviously works with the sacral chakra and with the base chakra if it's red, and that allows us to kind of, our, our sacral chakra especially is our creativity. Our red, our base chakra is our ability to feel safe and to generate security for ourselves. So working with that type of energy and that vitality in, that carnelian brings will really help you to look after that. How you navigate yourself, you may find there's a lack of kindness um, from other people. You may not feel too kind. People might just get on your nerves a bit, <laughs> maybe just after the holidays. Lapis Lazuli, the stone of kings, leaders, and gods. It brings down divine guidance. It helps us to know what to do with that guidance and clears away distractions. So if you're feeling a little bit that you don't have um, clarity in how to resolve these relationships, especially since Cancer, Full Moon, we want to be really clear on that. Lapis is really, really great. 
The essential oil that resonates really beautifully with the Isis retrograde is Blue Lotus. Now, Blue Lotus is a high vibration oil. It's gonna work beautifully on that same day as the full moon. So combining it with your Roman chamomile, you know, you can diffuse your chamomile, anoint yourself with um, Blue Lotus, whatever works really well for you. Blue Lotus allows us to listen to our own guidance. And when you do find there's a lack of support or things aren't flowing with other people around you and you have to be a bit more independent, this will help. If you think about a lotus flower, if we poured five liters of vinegar on it or five liters of Chanel number no. five, it would still smell like a lotus flower because it's aquaphobic. What this oil allows us to do, being the embodiment of the blue lotus flower, is it allows you to actually um, not take on the insults and the flattery and the, and the good and the bad that other people throw at you. It allows you just to relax, listen to your own guidance, be yourself, connect with spirit, and manifest the life you want, being in control of your own destiny. So around the 6th of January, it's gonna be a prominent day, lots of shifts, and these are the kind of oils and crystals you wanna work with. Our next retrograde happens on the 8th of January. Now this is from a minor planet way out beyond Pluto. So again, not going to have a significant impact on you, but you may find that the questions come up, make things very much about fairness in commerce and in trade and making sure that everything is brought in um, fairly and that there was a fair distribution of, of goods around the world and that type of thing. So how would this apply in your life? Well, you might start to have these thoughts, and it's really great to be thinking around this at the start of the year, of we all want to manifest something. We all have these goals in our life, but are they fair? Are they fair on other people? Is it just? And so this is a really great time to contemplate, is everything that I desire in life for the greater good of all concerned, or is it just for the greater good of you? <laughs> so this is a really great kind of introspection on the 8th of January to check this out. Now, this is where I really like to work with watermelon tourmaline. Now, this is a raw piece. You can see you've got the green around the outside and pink on the inside. You may be able to see my pendant right there. The green and the pink as well. I'm not sure how dark or how obvious that is. But this has got that give and that take of the heart. Are you manifesting so that you can give back or are you manifesting just so you can take more and more and more and more? Be really, really clear on that because you'll find that the flow of abundance will come a lot more if there's an ebb and a flow rather than a take, 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 take. What often happens, if you take, take, take with that greed, the universe will find a way to strip it all from you in one big. There'll be like a take, 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 and it's gone in that way. So we wanna get that flow going all the time and you're gonna find life to be a lot easier. This is where we can work with cumin essential oil. Whenever you're doing any abundance or manifestation work, bring in a drop of cumin. Cumin actually makes sure that whatever you manifest is for the greater good of all concerns, like throwing that little caveat or that little clause into any work that you're doing. So a really great combination when Make Make is in retrograde. It's gonna be in retrograde from the 8th of January all the way through to the 21st of June. So it's normally when it's going into retrograde, so around the 8th of June and out of retrograde on the 21st of June, that's when you'll find. So 8th of Jan, 21st June, those two dates will be quite prominent. Am, am I manifesting and is there an equal give and take in my manifestation? Our next retrograde, and this will be a bit more of a major one, this is Lilith retrograde. Now Lilith, there's different terms for Lilith use, it's like a black moon and a calculated point. This is the actual asteroid that goes into retrograde on the 17th of January until the 26th of April. Now Lilith was believed to be Adam's first wife, but rather than be subservient and do what Adam wanted, she went off wondering and discovered how the world worked and was said to be the one who discovered astrology and taught it to man. And thus she knew the ways and the plans of God and what our destiny was. Really, really interesting. Anyway, she was obviously kicked out of heaven, Eve came in and the story goes on. And Lilith is often depicted as being this demon or devil or disobedient woman or beast or that type of thing. In fact, she was just someone who wanted to dance to the beat of her own drum. She's got that rebellious streak. And I think all of us want to kind of rebel in one way or another. However, constantly you'll find that the term Lilith, if you Google, you know, goddess or, or um, figure Lilith, you'll find these demonic kind of pictures and that kind of thing. They're being repressed. They're not being allowed to shine their light and show who they truly are. And when Lilith goes into retrograde, you may feel that you're being repressed, that somehow maybe at work they won't let you do something or you're not getting chosen to do something or your partner won't let you do so. Any of those types of things will come up. This is a great time to look at, okay, where am I allowing myself to be repressed? And is part of that part of my attitude of like, oh no, I'm not allowed to do that. Our freedom can sometimes be a state of mind and Lilith encourages you to look at, okay, how do I break free from, be, you know, where, where am I in self-imposed cages? 
where am I in a cage, but the, the door is open? You know, I find a lot of people found themselves getting into their comfort zone over the pandemic. And now we've got that freedom back, but they're still in that kind of dull, just watching TV, hanging at home, and they're not getting out and milking life for all it's got. This is where we reach for Covalite. Covalite has a really strong connection to Lilith and helps us to look at who we are and how we can bring that power up. The stone is made out of copper and sulfur, and copper is obviously the metal of love. Sulfur is a mineral associated with the sun. So it's like bringing our light and bringing our shine out when it's hidden within us. So work with Covalite around that time. You also wanna work with your anise scented oils. You know, there's oils like fennel, I really love star anise, that's probably my favourite one for working with, um, with Lilith, even um, anise myrtle from Australia. These kind of really help the intuition to contemplate where am I being repressed and how do I want to break free? Really important around this time to look at that and make sure that as we go through the next year, you're not being restricted. Now the following day, we've got another prominent astrological retrograde happening. Mercury will come out of retrograde, so Mercury goes direct. And remember, as I mentioned before, it's going in and coming out of retrograde. Those dates are the most prominent and normally when people feel the influence the most. Each retrograde happens in a different planet and this can flavor it. And so I like to look, especially with our Mercury retrogrades, because we know them so well, what sign will be in and how they'll be flavored. We know during Mercury retrograde, we have communication breakdowns, which is great, I think, because it allows us to realize how we can improve communication and we constantly know how important communication is in life in general. So getting little reminders and little tips on how to improve it is great. So it's great we have three or four Mercury retrogrades a year. What we also have is we'll have technology breakdowns. We'll have our, 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 our logical minds not working too well, um, but this allows our intuition to actually be enhanced. So this is why I chose blue sapphire. Blue sapphires are an underestimated crystal for the third eye chakra. They not only help to activate our intuitive abilities or our clear abilities, but they also allow us to understand what those messages mean. This is a gift that's not brought from all the indigo crystals. So allow yourself to just kind of be a little bit more um, led by your intuition during this time. Capricorn also rules things such as property and work, obviously. Um, so what we wanna do there is we wanna be careful that we're uh, watching how we communicate at work, making sure we leave enough time to get to work, backing up all our information before we get, while we're at work and all those types of things, making sure we hit save, and not signing any contracts ideally to do with property, leasing, um, or renting of land as well. That could, it's actually recommended that we spend more time with family. So that works really well with this full moon that we have in Cancer this month. So it's a real, real good time to spend with family. Now, because things get a little bit crazy during a Mercury retrograde, you want to keep yourself centered and focused. And this is where Arbor Vitae, oh, hold on, oh yeah, Arbor Vitae is really, really great. Um, Arbor Vitae is this big cedar tree and the oil is in, in it is so thick that insects, mold, nothing will get into it type of thing. So, and it also grows so tall up towards the heaven. So it allows you to make sure you don't have anything eating at you or bugging you when you are trying to grow or trying to get to where you need to go. So blue sapphire and um, Arbor Vitae are really great for that. Next, we have our new moon, and our new moon is going to be happening in Aquarius. So Aquarius is the sign of community, of greater good, of even the global community, and making sure that we're bringing light to the world and making this world a better place. This is where I really like to work with the new moons. I like to work with dark stones, and I've chosen nebula stone. This is a really beautiful one for helping us to kind of have that more global view to think about what's possible and to not just kind of worry about our own lot. As we go into 2023, the last two years were really rough with the pandemic. Then we've had 2022, which has been rough financially and with what's happening with, you, um, with Ukraine. And so, you know, I, I saw a great kind of little funny joke on uh, Instagram where someone said, do you remember when good things used to happen? Let's go back to those times again. And Nebula Stone is kind of encouraging you to think about, yeah, okay, in the big picture, there are some good things. And let's kind of bring back that hope and that joy and that type of thing. So in a new moon, we plan for what we want to bring forward. Combine that also with blue tansy. Now I love blue tansy, why? It comes from a yellow flower, but the oil is actually bright blue. 
It works so beautifully with our third eye chakra. And this is a really great time to anoint it on the third eye chakra. You can mix it with your moisturizer, rub that all over, and it allows you to kind of relax into dreaming again. As children, we used to daydream and imagine all the great things we'd love to happen. As adults, why do we stop daydreaming? Why can we not conceive what we'd love to happen and then use our adult brain to actually make it happen? That's the ability of being, that's the blessing of being a human that we can actually do that. So working with nebula stone and blue tansy, kind of allow you to be a bit more expansive, to dream a little bit more, and then go, hey, in 2023, let's make those dreams a reality. Now our final retrograde is another minor one from a minor planet, Humea, who is out beyond Pluto as well. This is happening from the 29th of January until the 14th of July. Humea governs fairness and balance and harmony as well. Not so much in the abundance as we we're talking about with Make and Make, but more so in just treatment. First of all, Humea will kind of bring up issues about balancing the yin and the yang, about within us and fairness between men and women. So this is where I love to work with Sonora Sunrise. So this is a combination of Chrysocolla and Cuprite. So both copper minerals, so again, copper is associated with Venus, which is associated with love, so it's a loving stone. But we've got the feminine aspect of Chrysocolla and the masculine and Cuprite. Equal love between men and women, bringing out fairness in relationships and different things like that. Humea is also associated with stopping discrimination between, you know, discrimination against certain races or spiritual beliefs or women or, um, you know, ra racial discrimination, sexual discrimination, any of those type of things. This is where I love to bring in lemon myrtle. You see, lemon myrtle is the oil of make, the gift it brings us of makeshift. Being an Australian oil, I chose an Australian word for this. Mateship, mate, we're all equal. Doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, we all may be better at one thing, worse at another, but we all have something to contribute. And when we start to see and embrace the rainbow of diversity, and this is what Humea Retrograde really brings out, it will point out discrimination issues. So you may see in the news some protests or someone being discriminated against, and that's your cue to go, okay, how can I treat everyone a bit more fairly? This will balance the masculine and feminine, the snore of sunrise. This will help with balancing out, making sure everyone is treated fairly. So that is what you can expect for January. As I said, the lunar cycle will be kind of the prominent things. Mercury retrograde will be um, an effect as well. Lilith um, is quite close to us, so you'll feel a little bit of that. The other ones, just be aware of that. Stay tuned to my social media. Listen to my podcast, The Blessed Journey, each week wherever you listen to your podcast. Um, also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll keep you updated with more specifics as those dates come. But that's kind of my shopping list. I'll have the list in the comment section below. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little while. Enjoy January and welcome to the brand new year. May it be amazing for you. Blessed be.